I wanna dance. Clock strikes upon the hour, and the sun begins to fade. Still enough time to figure out how to chase my blues away. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was uh, letting my husband know that I'm going to be on a Zoom call for a while. No worries. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing okay too. A bit stressed though. But oh yeah? Yeah, a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, always stressed. Um, are you ready for school tomorrow? School? Yeah. We started school two weeks ago. Oh, it's pretty soon uh, in USA. Here yeah, they started, they, Arizona started like a month ago. They started August 8th. And then here in California, we started two weeks ago. We started on the, on the 18th. Oh my God. I know. But do, do you have uh, the same uh, holiday as, uh, as us? You know, mm -hmm. July and August? Yeah. Uh, we ended in June. Oh, okay. The middle of June. It felt like it just flew by. It felt like we didn't get enough vacation time. I was like, school is starting so quick. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Are you a bit stressed uh, with this whole COVID situation for your kids to go back to school? I was at first because they don't really go back to school. So we were like, okay, well, I'm going to be homeschooling my kids. And, you know, we experienced that towards the end of last semester. And it was just a mind fuck. It was a lot, you know, like getting them home. And then we're starting full time school Monday through Friday for a couple hours. And, <laughs> Especially, I have a kindergartner, so getting them to sit on Zoom for so, five so, hours. So you receive um, online lessons from their teachers? Yeah, and so okay. they would set up, we have Google Classroom. But this year, uh, we're in first grade, we have an awesome teacher. He is going to like a tutor, um, a tutor studio three days a week in the morning, and they like put them in their own rooms, they wear yeah. masks. So he gets help a couple days a week. Um, so I'm, oh God, it just feels so good to have help with school. I think I have that. Um, and you're also going back to, to school soon. Um, I think you, you have a new project coming soon called Eat Dance Convention. Uh, what is it exactly and what's your role in it? Uh, so Heat Dance Convention is just a new, it's a new dance convention platform. Um, and I will be a faculty teacher. I'll be teaching jazz funk yeah. and I'm really excited. It's my first dance convention. Um, so we'll be traveling across the U S and whatever it looks like for the state mandate, um, we'll try our best to, you know, teach the kids as best as we can. And whether it looks like uh, a big group setting or it's just in studios with smaller groups um, yeah. adhering to social guidelines. We're just really excited to get to hang out with the kids and teach. It's, it's a new convention. So we're like, what can we do? What are we able to do? Um, but it's my first convention. So I'm so excited. What was it you, you Heidi, or uh, they contacted you to do this? I didn't understand you. What'd you say? Uh, was it your idea this whole convention or did they oh no 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 yeah no i i was just uh reached out to and you know asked if i wanted to join so i'm not putting it on it's just it's a group of us uh doing it together okay and when when will it start we start in november i think Ooh. Mm. um so in two months two months let's see my first date yeah it's november 8th We'll be starting in Florida. We do Phoenix, Long Beach, or no, Long Branch, San Jose, Denver, Chicago. Um, uh, yeah. Will there be online lessons for people who can attend? Uh, I believe that they're going to try and add an online component to it. It could be cool. Um, so you, yeah. you're an amazing dancer and an artist in general. Uh, I called you a Swiss Army knife because you... You're a dancer, you're a singer, you're an actress, and um, you're a mom, and I'm sure many more. It's uh, just so nice. I love it. <laughs> when I was preparing this interview, I watched all your Dancing Stars video, your IG videos, and I was wondering, when you are dancing, are you always you know, following a choreography, or sometimes 
you're just listening to a song and let your body express express itself uh most of the time i'm following choreography if i'm dancing um you know there's been some times where i really like to improv and it was a big part of my pastime as a dancer yeah. uh you know just to improv especially for uh like lyrical and contemporary it feels really good to just let your body go um but it's hard now that i'm older i don't dance as much so i don't feel as confident doing improv so to help myself feel more confident most of the time i choreograph something even if it's just a few bits and pieces here so i know same as an actor i like to hit these notes at this part of the music um and then in between i can improv or whether i choreograph like two eights and then the rest i improv um I mean, just to move your body, it feels so good. So yeah, sure. Whatever that looks, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and error, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm not a, a dancer at all, but um, I'm looking to take some lessons because three weeks ago I was feeling very, you know, kind of heavy, and so I was in my living room and I put some music on, and I don't know why, I started to not dance but just move my oh, body. So and, good. And yeah, I probably look ridiculous, but at the end, I felt so good, like sure. it. Like if it was, like if dancing has therapeutic virtues, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah. Now I'm starting to take some sense, but not to be a dancer, just to uh, let the stress, uh, anxiety go away. Yeah, yeah. You you see like a lot of um, like therapists and people who deal with anxiety. They like um, they recommend us to like dance or shake your body. Like a lot of times yeah. the therapist will tell you to release trauma, you should shake your body. So no wonder dancing feels so good. I mean, you're moving every limb. Yeah. And you're letting all this trauma or, you know, all this anxiety go. So at the end, you just feel so rejuvenated and good. Uh, are, you, are you doing some, are you trying to share your passion with your family and, you know, doing some, some dance uh, sometimes just to, um, Sorry, <laughs> just to, ah, sorry, I lost it. Uh, so are you trying sometimes to share your passion with your kids? Uh, so are you dancing uh, with them? Yeah. 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 Um, we actually have like weekly dance parties in our house <laughs> and they don't like to be videotaped. Well, my youngest does. My oldest is like super shy with the camera. So he doesn't love it when I try and videotape their like dance parties, but we turn on tunes and we dance around the house and it's just so fun. It's keeps the time, like keeps us busy. Yeah. Keeps the time passing. My youngest is like really agile and like really, <laughs> he like bounces around the house. We call him just like our springboard. He literally bounces from like place to place. Um, so I just kind of watch him and it's his natural ability to move and he'll say stuff like, mom, watch me do this ballet move. He has no idea what ballet really is. <laughs> he'll do like a pirouette. And so I think it just comes out of him naturally, maybe from seeing me do some dance stuff. You know, I teach in, in the house sometimes and, um, you yeah, just kind of picking up on that. Yeah. So how old were you when you started, first started to, to dance? Mm -hmm. I was one years old when I started dancing. One year old. <laughs> one years old, yeah. I started walking at seven months and my sisters were both dancing by then. So, so my mom was like, let's just throw her in dance. If she really wants to be dancing, let's do it. So I was like the one year old in the toddler class. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you, my body definitely doesn't love that, that I've been dancing for so long. It's like, okay, it's time to relax. Let's stop dancing. Yeah, it, it was your path since the very beginning. Yeah. So yeah, you, I've been doing ever since. you are best known by the audience and your fans probably well as Britney Spears, not to be mistaken for Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Uh, let's talk about the beginning of the journey. I think it started differently for you because you didn't have to do an audition, right? Yeah, right. I was assisting Zach Woodley, the choreographer at the time. I was helping yeah. out Corey um, with some of his like solo performances for the pilot. And I was assisting him and then they were casting for the rest of the season once it got picked up. And so I went in to teach the rest of the cast for the single ladies when we did that in the episode, Kurt yeah. and his storyline. So I was teaching them single ladies and um, 
you know, they wanted to hire some dancers for the show because everybody was primarily a singer or an actor. And if it was a glee club, you know, there need to be some dancers sprinkled in. And so Zach, I think he kind of pitched me to Ryan and was like, hey, watch her. I'll videotape her. You can come in and watch our rehearsals. Keep an eye on her. If you're interested, you know, we can just hire her. Um, and so that's exactly what happened. I taught the single ladies dance and Ryan came in to watch it. So stressful to be in a room with him, obviously. It was like, you know, gonna pee my pants. And um, <laughs> he had had me, he had scheduled me to come in and read. He was get, I was gonna read Quinn's lines. Yeah. And I went into the office to read twice and got rescheduled twice um, after I had performed single ladies and both times got canceled. And then I got a call from my agent that I got this job as this role. It wasn't like a big role. I wasn't speaking, but I was going to be playing like a cheerio. So yeah, that's kind of how it happened. The whirlwind. Yeah. But, but were you even thinking uh, about um, to start a career as an actress? Yeah. So about a year prior to that, I had decided because the, the whole idea of being a dancer was never my thing. I was never planning to move to LA to be a dancer. Yeah. So in my mind, I had come to LA, I had started this career, but I was never convinced myself. I was just like, I don't know if this is it. Okay, well, I'm here in LA and I, I secretly have always wanted to become an actress. Why don't I just start doing that while I'm here too? And so I emailed my dance agents and I was like, hey, just a heads up, like, I'm not going to really be taking dance jobs. I really want to focus on taking class and becoming an actress. And which was crazy at the time because I was working. I was like consistently working as a dancer. I was with Beyonce. I was doing all this stuff. Um, so, I mean, even thinking back on it now, I'm like, well, what were you doing? Like you, you were set as a dancer, but you know, I was just like blindly optimistic at being this actress. Um, and so yeah, I took classes and you, and, and, and you got pretty lucky because Glee was your first job, right? Glee was my first acting yeah. job. And it was a big one. Did you have a moment of doubt, hesitation before saying yes to play Britney because, you know, you weren't initially an actress and the pressure was maybe too big because it was a big show, a big channel. Um, and yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the pressure wasn't so big because the role was a non-speaking role. I was basically just like a glorified background artist, you know. Um, yeah. So it was really my opportunity to watch all the actors work. And in hopes that I could start getting lines, I had a few. And those lines, I mean, I tell you, the pressure that I felt being on set, like, uh, my heart was palpitating. I, like, I blacked out most of the time on my first couple lines. Um, so there was no idea behind what Britney was yet. I had, I had formulated and like proposed who Britney was um, over the next couple months when Ryan would come in. Uh, I had like just come up with this idea that she was a uh, not so smart person and that everything was just kind of blank and not there. <laughs> um, it was it was really based on Karen. I think her name's Karen from Mean Girls. I was like that character is iconic i want to be that she's hysterical um so yeah i guess to go back to your question like i wasn't i wasn't even thinking about this big huge role i mean yeah to me it was huge i was like oh my god i just yeah. got this awesome job but i call it blind optimism because i'm like fuck it i'm gonna do this like you know i didn't think twice about everything like i do now i was just like we're doing this we're gonna figure it out and you know, everything kind of came later with how big the show really got. Okay, so you you said that at first she wasn't she wasn't that smart, and you know what what I love about your character is that she actually broke a whole cliche. You know, in Belgium, um, I don't know if it's the same in USA, but in Belgium, people often refer to someone as being blonde because she or he does something stupid. Uh, which is ridiculous. Um, anyways, at first, uh, Brittany seems to follow this path, but then she appears to be a genius. Uh, so she literally broke, broke this whole cliche. 
And was it on purpose to do this storyline for her or the writers didn't even know uh, she was going to do that? They were going to do that. That she was secretly a genius? Uh, yeah, was it uh, on purpose to do this storyline to make her not smart, but then a genius? Or it comes up after, it came up after? Yeah, I think because Britney was never originated any certain way, it was like kind of created by both me and like Ian Brennan and Ryan Murphy. It was just like imagined and like, I don't know, there was no plan for it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think because like I just had such small lines in the beginning that once fans really clung to Britney and then the relationship with Santana formulated, they were like, okay, well now what? Now what are we gonna do with her? Um, and there was so much to give for the daft storylines. But then I think like once you dive deeper into that, it's like, well, where do we go from here? She can't just be daft the whole time. Like we have to come up with some new innovative ways to get her, maybe overcome her disability or whatever that looks like to, to the audience. Um, because, you know, the show is really about like overcoming things in your life. And yeah. So I think for them, it just, it showed itself, it presented itself as she was just a genius, but misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I bet some teenagers uh, felt very good about themselves when they saw how Britney turns out, because, you know, some of them are feeling very discouraged when they see uh, that their grades are not as good as the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm when they failed, uh, because high school is a pretty proud period. Um, so in place. Yeah, so the show is a good reference for many teenagers. We need to feel represented. We need to feel that they're not alone. Um, it shows many problems uh, that teenager, teenagers are going through. So you I even me. see it in my son. I see it with my six-year-old. He's so hard on himself. Yeah. When we're, like when we're doing anything, he's like, I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it wrong. So he won't answer. Yeah. There's a big pressure. Yeah. I'm like, if you fail, that's how you learn. Like, that's what we're doing here is if we're exactly. not, if we, don't, if we don't fail, we won't learn the right answer. Exactly. Um, so kids well, probably just feel so much pressure. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. I remember myself in high school, just a big pressure to do the right thing. And, and uh, now I ended up um, I ended up having a hard time uh, finding my path. You know, I I tried uh, communication, mm -hmm. and then the year after I tried to study for being a primary teacher at school, but then I oh, didn't okay. like it. So after that, I'm trying right now journalism, and I think it's the right path now. But yeah. It's really, really hard. I think I would have probably been in your same boat if I had continued on college. You know, like you start general major and then you're like, okay, well, now what? I don't quite know what I want to do. Exactly. So you like explore all these random classes. And then I think, you know, you kind of find out like what really hits home for you once you get a little bit older and your brain fully forms and you're like, you start to figure out who you are and what your voice means. Yeah, and the, the show uh, talked about these problems. Do you think you could suggest uh, to your niece, your, your kids to, to just watch the show one day or is it too weird for you? No, I definitely, I would love for them to. The show's way too advanced for my six and four year old. Yeah. I have showed them the dinosaur performance that I did for Promosaurus. Um, because they obviously can't watch the storylines. It's just way too advanced. Yeah. Um, uh, but they have seen my dance performances. My son knows I'm like semi-famous. Um, and they just really get a kick out of like seeing me perform. My niece is 13 now and 10. They've watched it. They've seen the show. But again, it's like, you know, it gets into some some hard topics to talk about and so whether you are comfortable as a parent you know yeah 
how fast do you want to let them see stuff like that? Um, I'll wait until they're a little older, I think. But you know, I can't keep them away from it for forever. Yeah. Wait, um, wait before showing them uh, the you know like a virgin performance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, how uh, you know, did they react uh, to know that you you are famous? I always wondered that so when when a parent. You know you what? Know. It's like it's not that weird because they watch YouTube all the time and they see all these people with like followers and subscribers. And so to them, they're famous. And I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that weird for him. Um, it's actually kind of cool in a way because we get invited to do like monster jam and we get to like go to stuff, but I'm not necessarily being like followed around um you know i'm not like so famous that it's weird and people are crazy it's just like well we get to do some cool stuff and we get some free stuff once in a while so for them i mean i don't know they're so young my four-year-old doesn't understand it all but my six-year-old is like even me like they're obsessed with like steven sure or steve share some youtuber yeah, I, don't know. I don't know i'm like i'll message them on instagram and my son's like oh no i'm like yes i'm getting mom points for that <laughs> um but, but you know were you afraid uh, at first to have a family because the paparazzi and all that stuff no i mean no i i really made a choice at that point i was not comfortable with being really famous when it happened in season two and we all just became like instant famous Yeah. And people were like coming up to you at lunchtime, the whole lunchtime. And I couldn't get like time to myself. I'm like, this isn't it. Like, I'm not down to not enjoy one on one time. You know, my love language is quality time. So anytime quality time is interrupted, I'm like, way, I'm like way off. I'm pissed. <laughs> so yeah, the whole like celebrity, like being famous was just not it for me. Um, so I really like, I don't know, I involuntarily removed myself from that equation. So before my kids were, were born, that wasn't, that wasn't a part of our lifestyle. Yeah. So I had to deal with that. I've had some people come up and ask for pictures, but that's like, if you're really a fan, you know, people will be like, oh, oh my God. And so. how did you man manage to, you know, um stay yourself and you know not act like uh like a bad person because you're famous you know what i mean yeah i do know what you mean i think we have some great examples honestly of people that are in the spotlight that really do a good job of sharing exactly who they are um so those are the people that i gravitate towards because i really see them being genuine in themselves mm -hmm. and i see how good it makes fans and other people feel and i want everybody to feel included and i i, I myself am like that i'm an empath so i just want people to feel good um i i have gone to a place where i didn't feel like myself and i was being like famous you know i was like fulfilling the shoes of what a famous person does based on what I see in magazines. And I tried it, it felt really wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I stopped, like I just wasn't, I just hated it. Um, so then I just learned to be myself and slowly but surely just was like, you know, if fame's not important to me, like just be yourself and people will will gravitate yeah, towards sure. it. Sure, and you can be famous one day, but you know, We don't know what could happen uh, yeah. in a month. So, yeah. yeah. Life changes so quickly. Sure. So, Heather, thanks. People can cancel you so quickly, too. Sorry? I said people can cancel you so quickly, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Heather, thanks to Brittany, you kind of an icon and a role model for, role model for young LGBTQ plus and even older. For six years, you've shown us a beautiful relationship with uh, Nea Centena. And today, after so many years, 
it still has a huge impact and I really think it would last forever. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the fact you're part of many lesbian, gays, self-acceptance journey, uh, coming out journey? I think it's just so magical and special for what the show did for so many people to make them feel like they could really be themselves and just allow the rest of the world to come to them with their acceptance once they accepted themselves. Um, I really love seeing that because I grew up in the arts and so I was surrounded by people who didn't feel comfortable being themselves yeah. and just watching people struggle with that and feeling like they have to hide who they are for so long. Um, and you watching it, it's just, you know, it's like, it's just a beautiful equation just coming together. And I really felt blessed to be a part of that um, and just hear all the stories. I still hear about it. People just coming into yeah. the show and just watching it. It's like, I love it. I, I am so proud of these people and I get it from parents, like parents message me and they're like, thank you so much for your storyline. It helped my child tell me who they are. And I'm like, oh yeah you know you're receiving that every day and i received some uh message like that uh because people knew that i was doing an interview with you and, and i'm thinking about a young lady who reached out to me uh, and it really moved me because it put me back at her place uh, when i fell alone and is like myself for being gay and she it was important for her for me to ask you uh, if she had any advice of how to come out uh, to the people she loves and, and just how to be brave? Well, I think it's kind of an all-encompassing question because um, some people aren't built with that. You know, like I myself, I, I, you know, it's hard to acknowledge feelings to yourself first and foremost. Yeah. But secondly, to people that you care about, um, people that see you every day, that you haven't completely been yourself. So um, I don't know. It's like, and I'm learning this still now. It's so hard sometimes to just say things out loud, um, to just address things out loud. I don't know what it is, why we have this like, the silence filter, I mean, it's obviously yeah. there for a reason, but. Yeah, yeah. We, we want to say something, but it's like our brain, our brain. Uh, How can we not trigger our mouth to yeah. say it? And why is it so scary? Yeah, it's so hard. Right? Um, I haven't dealt with that, that gene. Yeah. And a lot of people weren't. Um, I think the best advice I can give you is if you're so terrified to do it, but you know it's important to you, do it in any way that looks like. So a lot of people that I know wrote letters to their parents. Maybe they couldn't even speak it out loud, but like yeah. sending it in the mail. Um, and if you can write a letter and it feels so overwhelming to try and wrap your brain, your brain around starting the conversation, you, you can tell your family member, your parents, like I have a letter to read to you and it's really hard for me to do this, but um, I just, I need to do it. Uh, I think that's like the first step for people yeah, sure. who don't quite know how to address it. Yeah, I think they, they have to start by saying maybe to a friend, uh, because yeah, family is just a big step to tell to your parents. Yeah. So maybe try to say that to a friend, which maybe online, you know, on Twitter, you can make some um, friends online and just tell them yeah any way that it looks like to you yeah so uh those fans are dreaming to thank you in person um i know for example that in france um more than a thousand of them have gathered to you know in a group on facebook to make a glicon happen will you be open to the idea to travel the world and meet the gleeks or is it something you too shy maybe to do? I'd be down. I mean, once this pandemic's over and you know, if we, if I can get to be, if I'm, if I'm flown and I get to experience France or wherever, 
I'm down. I'm there. Um, I am shy. I'm an introvert. So I always feel like this weird connection with fans because I'm like, I don't know you, but I also love you. And I know, you know me. So like we can <laughs> hug and we can be friends. Um, but I always feel like people expect more and I'm like, ah, what do I say? What do I do? You know, you never knew if you're doing it right. Um, yeah. so it's always fun. But whenever you come in France, in Belgium, maybe in London, uh, I'll be there and it's going to be the best party ever. And uh, yeah, I would like to thank you so much for this lovely chat. Uh, and I'm very proud now, now and blessed for this moment. And it's all because of you and your trust in me. So yeah, thank you of so course. much. I've got to watch a couple of your interviews and they're just lovely and yeah. you know, giving people a chance to get to know everybody. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to send you the link once it's posted, but just so you know, I won't cut anything because I think it's more real like, like that. And I like it that way. It's not perfect, but who cares? So I will keep uh, my English mistakes and everything uh, and not just going to put a pretty background uh, behind us but that's okay. it <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so have a good day and you too uh, it was great chatting with you good luck in school thank you <laughs> <laughs> may you stay as calm as possible yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have a nice day I wanna dance with